maybe two of them, got to be honest, and uh, one of those large Diet Dr. Peppers, and, <laughs> and I'm off and running. And so we want you to go to Rudy's and check it out. Right there, South Loop and Slide, over by the mall. You know where it's at. Go get in line and get your barbecue coming up tonight. Joining us in place of head coach Tim Tadlock is pitching coach, assistant coach Matt Gardner. Coach Tadlock had a rather large scheduling conflict, so he will not be joining us here today, uh, but here to talk about it with us and at length and do a terrific job laying it all out for us is Coach Gardner. Hey, I appreciate you being here, Coach. No problem. All right, so – you know, last week, you know, it, I've been thinking about this, how to start the show with you. Um, you know, I, I've heard people uh, around town, like, what's wrong? What's going on? Should we panic? And I'm like, okay, I'm not going to start that way with the coach when the team is ranked 11th in the country. But I will say, in your opinion, what went wrong over this weekend? Well, I mean, on Friday, just Pat. <clears throat> Pat was just okay, you know, couldn't get out of the second inning. And, um, you know, he's a little sick during the week. And you could tell stuff-wise just wasn't as crisp, even in the bullpen before. And, you know, he's going to take the ball. And, you know, the second inning just kind of kind of got him um, and just couldn't make a pitch to get out of it. Um, you know, and that was the beginning of that game. Um, and then kind of the game gets out of hand late, um, you know, and you try to save some bullets for the next couple of days. And, you know, then Micah goes out and throws great, and um, Sub was really good, and, you know, Mason gives you a chance to win the game, and then, you know, the young guys had some struggles on Sunday. Um, same guys that threw on last Sunday at West Virginia that were really good, and, you know, just consistency out of the bullpen and some of that stuff is probably, you know, probably the biggest thing um, for some of those guys, and, um, you know, we need those guys that are starting to go out and pitch good and, and give us length and uh, keep us in the game and give us a chance to score, and, um, you know, the bullpen, yeah, it's it's been a little bit up and down, I guess you could say. And it's so, been that way, yeah. Yeah, so, um, you know, uh, part of college baseball, part of growing pains, um, part of week to week, and consistency, you know, guys being consistent on the mound and, and young guys especially and, and putting those guys in those situations. And we love those guys, and those guys will get it figured out. And, um, you know, you want to be playing your best baseball at the end. Uh, you know, we've – We've gone over and looked at it, and, you know, you could <clears> – in 19, I think, you know, we left West Virginia. You know, Killian throws a really good game on Sunday, and you come play Baylor, and we lose in, on Friday, and then we win in extras on Saturday and kind of propelled us and took us off. But, you know, we've had some ups and downs over the years in, in Big 12 play and in certain series, and Baylor was going to be a tough matchup, and obviously they were, and they played really good, and we didn't. So, um yeah, and it's funny you say that, and, and I've been, you know, just trying to gather all my thoughts um, for this show and just the overall spot that you're in. You know, Cam Warren kept bringing it up over the weekend about the record that you had. Was it seven and eight or eight and seven? You're at eight, eight and seven right now, and then went on a run and won the league. I remember going up to Stillwater when you swept the Cowboys and talking to people around the Oklahoma State program. They're like, no way your guys' record is like this because that's when Dew Shedder started. That's when – you started playing your best baseball. Yeah, yeah. And that was in mid-May, and, you know, people were like, no, you guys are unbelievable. How, how's your record like this, and, and how are you on a, on a, a run like this? So, you know, I, and I would expect you, Coach Gardner, to start with the arms, but yesterday I think 0 for 13 with runners in scoring position. Is that – when that starts on Sunday, you get the first two on, you go walk, base, hit, whatever it was. You got runners at first and second, and you can't move them. Is that something that's contagious and that can kind of catch on throughout a game? Um, I think, you know, like their guy thought made pitches. Uh, he did make some pitches with people on base. You know, I think for us probably as a group offensively, I think guys, you know, under – there's there's some probably some pressing going on um, when, you're, when like. you're behind um, and guys thinking, hey, I got to get it all back right now or I have to get a hit instead of just having a good at bat. And, you know, hitting's hard, um, you know, and – you know, taking what they give you and taking your hit and, you know, if it's a walk and passing the baton on to the next guy and let him get it done, um, whatever it may be. You know, their guy made pitches, um, but I could also say we probably pressed a little bit and just felt like, you know, our guys were trying so hard um, and felt like they had to score, had to score, had to score, had to get the hit that, you know, in baseball that's just – it's a game that, you know, that doesn't work. You know, you just got to play the game and – and almost, you know, pl not play the scoreboard and just play and have good at-bats and let the game kind of come to you. And 
um, you know, take what they give you. And, you know, the harder you try, sometimes the worse it can be. So, um, you know, it's definitely a learning experience for those guys. And, you know, we've had some games like that where, you know, rushing scoring position, we've struggled. And I think part of it's the guys making pitches and part of it's just, hey, man, all those guys, they want to get it done so bad and they want to win so bad that, you know, they get out of their element a little bit and try to do stuff that they're not – that's not in their comfort zone. And that's what I want to bring up, too, is that, that Baylor team that I saw over this weekend is pretty darn good. No, a good club, and, and those guys do an outstanding job. We've – over the years, I know we've we've had some dogfights with them, um, you know, in series, and, um, you know, we've won some, lost some, and, and those guys do a really, really good job, and um, those guys have been doing it a long time. And, you know, they had a bunch of left-handed hitters, and that was tough on some of those young right-handers, and – um, they played good fundamental defense, and guys threw it over the plate and executed pitches. And um, it's an older group on the mound, obviously, and some guys that have been there a long graduate, time. Graduate, graduate, yeah. graduate, graduate. Yeah. So, you know, a lot of those nothing, guys were pitching in 2017. Yeah, 2017. It was yeah. crazy. We were talking in the clubhouse when Kettler was going to throw against us, and I thought Goot might have faced him. You know, now I think Goot missed him by a year, but you know, Goot's been done for a long time. So, um, you know, they had some experience and. Um, They've played well at times and, and have been in some really tight games and haven't come out on the wrong, right side of it for them a little bit. I know, you know, the games against Texas early in the year, they were close tight games on Friday and Saturday, and they ended up winning on Sunday. But, you know, Texas took two out of three, but every game was, you know, one run game. So uh, we knew they were good, and they were going to give us all we could handle uh, for sure. How good did it make you feel to see Micah look like Micah? You know, we saw that. His freshman year, I mean, he goes into Omaha at seven and zero, you know, and then next year he's, uh, you know, everybody got, you know, capped because of COVID nineteen, and then and boy, it was just it was vintage Micah on Saturday. Yeah, I thought Micah was really good. I thought the probably the biggest thing, you know, the slider was good, but the fastball command was really good early, and we kind of got to save the slider. But I thought he competed really well. I thought he showed some emotion. I thought he got after it and. Just, you know, the will to win and execute pitches was really high. And, um, you know, he went out there and did his job and did what he needed to do. And, you know, Mike is selling the ball really good. I mean, you could really probably argue um, there's been one hiccup inning against TCU. And other than that, hey, he's selling the ball really well. So, um, you know, those guys aren't going to be perfect every time out. So um, you want them to take the ball and give you a chance to win and give you some length and and uh, eat up some innings and – use their experience to keep you in baseball games and all that good stuff. So, um, you know, it was really fun to watch. Coach Tadlock is on a scheduling conflict. We've got Matt Gardner in here to break it all down. All right, I'm going to run this by you here because this will show you how much I'm not a baseball coach, okay? So we're up there. They go to do the mound visit. you got runners at second, third, and Conley coming to the plate. Okay, it's a 1-1 game in the bottom of the eighth. Uh, there's two outs? Yeah, two outs. So Cam Warren looks at me and says, what do you do here? And I hesitate, <laughs> and I say, I pitched to Conley. Would there ever be a situation in baseball where you would act? And the reason that I gave was I just – I go, and, and Braxton made me look like, you know. A genius. A genius. Yeah. I said, I think Braxton's clutch gene is really engaged and that he will come through. But is there any situation where you would have said, all right, we're going to pitch to Conley? I mean, it really all depend on the guy on the mound. You know, is he better versus left versus right? Um, you know, is the change up going to get There you got to switch, though. You know, you, I mean, yeah. There's more involved, too. Yeah, there's way more going on as far as, like, you know, is this guy get right handers out better than the left? You know, how's Braxton been that day? How's Cal been that day? You know, track record, hey, this is how we want to try to get him out. You know, do we take a shot at it? And now if we get behind, then we put him on. You know, there's all sorts of different ways. But Cal's – Cal's gotten big hits all, all year, too. So, um, as far as clutch gene, clutch gene, I mean, you could make that argument, but it's really probably – Cal's two for two in the 10th yeah, with home yeah. runs. So, um, you're really probably um, just basing it off information that you have as far as who's on the mound, who's pitching, you know, what's his stuff like, um, how can he get this guy out, is it a good matchup or bad matchup. And you play the matchup, and if it gets you, it gets you, and uh, it kind of got him. We've got more questions from our audience from at Guns Up Radio and a lot more for Coach Gardner. J. Bob Thomas will join us also on this program, so stay with us. We're going to take our first time out here, again, sponsored by Rudy's South Loop and Slide. 
off and running with Coach Gardner on the Texas Tech Sports Network from Learfield IMG College. At Texas Tech, innovation is at our core. Grit and determination drive our ambition. Art and culture spur our creativity. We're a community that makes Texas and the world a better place. We're a university where our accomplishments are many, our achievements are global, and our victories are glorious. Texas Tech University, from here, it's possible. And we are back with Red Raider Baseball with head coach Tim Tadlock, Matt Gardner joining us here, pitching coach and assistant coach, and a uh, guy that knows a lot about the game, dating back to his uh, – High school days. High school again, remind me. Andrews, Texas. Andrews, Texas. And then he went to Oklahoma State. Now he's here. Been here a long time. Doing a great job as the uh, pitch caller, pitch coach. The Red Raiders are 11th in the country, according to D1Baseball.com. 27-10 and 10 and 8-7 and 7 in the Big 12. Upcoming this week, in the middle of the week, a couple days. I've got the counter up here. Actually, it's just two days away, almost exactly to the hour. The New Mexico Lobos will come up at 6.30. You can get your tickets and join us at Rip Griffin Park for the Lobos. And then it's off to Texas. We'll get to the Longhorns coming up here in just a little bit. So the injuries, I mean, they've they've been a huge part of this. How are you handling that internally? And we can go back to Dobbins, Brostowski, back, uh, Austin, Becker, correct? Correct. Thank you. He sat in front of me and on the plane and, and helped me on the plane because I get nervous on plane rides like a little kid now. Um, <laughs> I appreciated him. He's very kind. Uh, the Vanderbilt transfer. And then you've got Birdsell. Uh, you've got Noisy. You've got Kurt Wilson. I mean, you could start a team. If you're like drafting, you could start a team like that. Any updates on those last three guys that I mentioned? Birdsell, Wilson, Noisy that you could give us? Man, as far as the HIPAA stuff, I mean, those guys are, you know, they're working their way back. Um, you know, Noisy and Birdsell probably won't be back uh, by this year. Kurt Wilson, um, you know, Kurt's all he's pitched for us in the past. Um, that's something he's going to be able to do sooner than hit. So we're working on that to get him in shape to do that. So you're probably a week or two away from maybe him being able to put a glove on and, and go pitch a little bit. Um, you know, just because it's going to be one of those deals that's going to be close late as far as if he's going to be able to really swing the bat and be ready to go. So, um, you know, he wants to get on the mound and help us any way he can. So, and Kurt's done that. And so, um, you know, we're doing some of that, and we'll go from there. I enjoy what, just, just talking to Kurt, period. And he's down there, and he's got the apparatus on the hand. He's telling me about what happened. And, you know, how adrenaline figures into it. You know, it's like I slid in. I thought I was fine. Then I went out in the outfield, and, and then I made a dive, and then I was stood up, and I was like, I'm not fine. And then you go through the all the process of, you know, exactly what did you do to yourself. But the whole time, kid had a smile on his face. And he's talking, you know, he's talking like, yeah, I'm going to be out there tomorrow, you know. I, I really feel like he thinks that way, that, um, you know, it, you kind of have to have that, that – uh, that attitude as a baseball player, like, you know, this game's going to hurt. It is not going to feel comfortable to play, and that's something we got to deal with. Yeah, and, and you're going to go through injuries within a baseball season. Um, you know, just sometimes it's guys that you don't need to lose or, you know, um, injuries are just part of it. I mean, you look at the big leagues and, you know, guys get hurt and banged up uh, every week or every month and guys go down and have setbacks and, miss weeks and miss months and all that stuff. And that's kind of why they got a minor league system, be able to call guys up and fill in and do some stuff. So it's part of the game. Um, we try to do the best we can to try to prevent those from happening. Um, you know, and sometimes you can do everything right and, and guys are still going to get banged up a little bit. So um, it's part of it. You hate to see it for those guys. And those guys are, you know, they're taking it and going to work and, um, those guys are pretty resilient where it's like, okay, just tell me what I need to do. Tell me the rehab and I'll get to work on it. So, yeah. um, it's part of it. And, um, it's just magnified a little bit when you have, uh, quite a few of them. So, and it's, um, every day should be thank your athletic trainer day. Brian Simpson 
has done a great job. And and when you throw in, I know he's he's had me get COVID tested five right, or six right. times. So I mean, just the job. I mean, being around baseball athletic trainers for the last sixteen years. Uh, that's a really hard job. And then let's, let's add in some COVID testing. Yeah, that'll be fun. That'll be yeah, easy. Yeah. Right? No, no problem. Sure. Um, so when you see Cody Masters kind of struggle through a weekend, it's, you know, Cody's kind of – when he hits it, it goes a mile. When he hits it, he drives in three. But he goes over over the weekend and struggles. What do you think's going through his mind, and and, and what does he need to do to, to get back going? Um, you know – I think Cody talked about it a little bit yesterday, just his approach and what he needs to try to do and just taking his hit and not trying to, you know, do damage in certain counts that, you know, when he's going good, you know, he can take those shots and um, feel good about it. And, you know, against left-handed pitching, it's been tough for him and he's grinding that thing out and trying to get it going. And, um, you know, you're going to have bad weeks and he's putting in the work and he's trying to get right and trying to stay with it and, um you know, it's – he'd probably tell you more than anything, probably his approach wasn't as good as it needed to be um, and kind of let him – let himself get out of his comfort zone and what he does well, um, you know, and fouled off some pitches he should hit, you know, and that's yeah. that's the game of baseball. The guys that are really, really good that do it for a long time, when they get their pitch, they don't foul it off, um, you know. And so sometimes, sometimes you're hitting them and sometimes you're fouling them off and getting yourself in some holes and – you know, you feel like you can't dig out of it. But, uh, you know, he's going to work at it, and Cody's uh, – his makeup's off the chart. So. Rombach's got to be a guy that's thinking so, – so he had like 15 home runs against HBU one weekend his first year. And, I mean, I think it was like four, but it feels like 15 in the in the game of baseball when you hit that many. And now in conference play, just can't get it going. What's going on with Nate? Uh, you know, Nate's probably – this last week's probably been as good as he's been as just far as like the ball coming off the bat and – his approach and how he's hitting it in BP and and in some of the air squads and his at bats that this weekend when he got to hit were good, um, you know. So he's he's coming. Um, you know, he lost some weight. He got sick, lost some weight. Probably dropped about ten or fifteen pounds. Has put it back on. I you thought know, he looks. Just, there's just little less things meat. In, yeah, there's just little some some little things where you know had a stomach bug that kind of you know got him a little bit. So um, you know he's gotten his strength back a little bit and. Um, you know, he's coming, so he's working at it. All right, I got some questions from the internet for from at Guns Up Radio. Coach Gardner, what's the best sports movie of all time? Best sports movie. Um, baseball movie? Sports movie. Um, I am a fan of, you know, Field of Dreams and Bull Durham and the Kevin Costner baseball movies. I am a big fan of those. Um, so that's probably what I'd go with. What was it, uh... What's the love of the game? Is For that, love of the game is a good one. A little bit of a chick flick, but it's not it's as good, good as it's good. the other ones you mentioned. Yeah, I mean, I, where would I, Caddyshack rank? I do like Caddyshack. I do. Now it's a uh, you know those golf. Don't movies show are, your kids. Yeah, you know, don't show get to kids, eighteen. I, I would say eighteen on Caddyshack. I'm Chevy sorry. Chase and Bill Murray are pretty good in it. So um, big fan. My favorite Hoosiers. I do like Hoosiers. I do like Hoosiers because believe it or not, I'm forty two years old in North Central Oklahoma. That's those gyms that we played in back then oh, looked yeah. exactly like oh, yeah. the gyms they played in in that movie. And my school was maroon and gold, and we thought we were Hoosiers in 1996. Yeah. How lame is that? Hoosiers is, I mean, Jimmy comes off the street and says he's going to play. They get it done. So Yeah, yeah. It's like <laughs> oh, coach goes, I go. Coach stays, I stay. My favorite. But, again, we're talking about baseball. So I understand coaches uh, – Coaches lean and coaches answers. Uh, what's the best stadium that you've played in ever? That is from Derek listening in Dallas. What's the best stadium you've ever played in? Um, you know, we play in the big league ballparks, but if you're talking college fields, um, we went to Clemson one year and it was pretty cool. It was pretty cool. Um, just the tailgating before the game. Did they do the smoke? Yeah, it was in a regional. And Orange smoke. <clears throat> it was in a regional, so it was packed house. Um, it was a pretty cool atmosphere. You know, Mississippi State, we went down there a couple of years ago before they renovated. It was pretty cool. So, But Clemson was something that I was like, man, I, okay. You know, because it's kind of out in the middle of nowhere. There's not a, it's not a big town. A lot of trees, small town. Um, but it was a beautiful campus and uh, pretty fun 
pretty fun atmosphere to play in. Yeah, that uh, one super that I got to with ORU, we went out there and led 15 of 18 innings and lost both games. Yeah, I remember that. Got walked off. Yeah. That was your time. That was. That's when I was playing. I did, you, uh, did you watch that series? I did. I did. Because <laughs> every time we talk, I'm just, I just have to dance around the subject so much because that was my first ever regional to cover as a person of the media and coaches down there playing for Oklahoma State. They get screwed out of hosting a regional because of hotel rooms, right? Yeah, yeah we were the one seed in Fayetteville, so. That's fun. That's nice, NCAA. Yeah, really nice to do that. And we were paired with Oral Roberts, who had beat us like six times during the year. Just so. red hot. Uh, yeah, I, I that was a great memory for me, but I'm anxious to bring it up around you because of what <laughs> happened. Did you ever think you are going to be a big leaguer? Uh, maybe when I was younger, but then, you know, I kind of had a couple of surgeries and kind of understood like, Hey man, that's, I've always wanted to coach, you know, my dad was a coach and yeah, there's times where those dreams were, they were dreams and you wanted to, and you tried to do everything you could to make those dreams happen. But probably after the second surgery, after like my junior year of college, I was like, yeah, I'm just, I'm going to play and I'm going to have fun and get after it, but I want to coach. So. There is that moment of realization. Yeah, and, and you could have, you know, I could have go, you could go kick it around in the minor leagues and try to, you know, test your hand at it. But there was, realistically, I understood like, hey, it's not going to happen. Yeah. So what was your first step out of Oklahoma State? What was your first move? Uh, I was our grad assistant at Oklahoma State, and then I was a volunteer like the next year at Oklahoma State. Okay. So, so I got to be there for a while. Stay in Stillwater for a while. Uh, Coach Anderson? Free- yeah, Coach Anderson. The free golf was – I mean, the golf was good. We were so. talking about golf before the show. Coach Gardner had a pretty good thing going. Yeah. So, with uh, Karsten Creek free tee times. So, the golf was good, so I didn't really want to leave. I understand. I understand. And when now we have the Rawls course, which is fun to go to. It's terrific. And uh, different styles of courses, but both – Awesome. All right, when we come back, we're going to have more with Coach Gardner. And stay with us. Again, go by Rudy's right now. They are ready. The line is going to be uh, – we'll, we'll see. Sometimes it's wrapped around, but you can always go in there and get your uh, brisket and sausage and ribs and all those great things that come with Rudy's. Proud sponsor of Red Raider Baseball with head coach Tim Tadlock on the Texas Tech Sports Network from Learfield IMG College. Texas Tech, innovation is at our core. Grit and determination drive our ambition. Art and culture spur our creativity. We're a community that makes Texas and the world a better place. We're a university where our accomplishments are many, our achievements are global, and our victories are glorious. Texas Tech University, from here, it's possible. We are back on Red Raider Baseball with head coach Tim Tadlock. Coach has a scheduling conflict. I assure you he is not dodging a thing. Okay, let's just put it that way. A scheduling conflict for Coach Tadlock today. Uh, we'll be back ready to rock on Wednesday with New Mexico. Lobos coming in. Lobos have had a lot of trouble scheduling games. We'll focus on them here in just a little bit. But, Coach, I wanted to go over the Big 12 standings with you here. Texas and TCU each lost yesterday. Finally, they are 12-3, and three, tied for first place. The Red Raiders are currently in third place by themselves at 8-7. and seven. Then it's Baylor and Oklahoma State at 7-8, and eight, K-State and West Virginia at 6-9. and nine. They just squared off with one another with K-State winning 2-3. of three. Oklahoma lost 2-3 of three to Georgia Southern in Norman, so they didn't have their conference record change. They're four and eight, and Kansas is four and eleven. But the Jayhawks show you that every night, every day, you got to show up and play because they beat TCU two to one. Your thoughts on the Big Twelve race and where it stands, and can you guys make a run? Yeah, I think we can, and, and you know, you everything's right in front of you. I mean, you got Texas this weekend, so you know you need to go down there and play good, and then you got uh, Kansas and Oklahoma at the end of the end of the year and, and try to take care of business. And for us, man, we just need to play good baseball and, and start getting better. And you want to play your best baseball at the end of the year and getting ready for postseason play. And, um, you know, you'd like to put yourself in position to make a run at the Big 12 title. Um, but you also just want to get better each every day. And um, 
be playing your best baseball at the end. I, I'm sure Baylor, as far as in basketball, they probably weren't mad they didn't win the Big 12 after they won the national championship. Um, you know, Great sometimes point. that happens. And, um, you know, there's been plenty of years in college baseball that stuff like that does happen. I remember playing when Fresno State won it, and I think they were one of the last four in. And then they got hot at the right time and, and played well. So we just need to get better every day and, and get things figured out and get guys going and and get guys playing good baseball towards the end of the year and, and into postseason play and, and make your run. How far behind were the young pitchers when they arrived on campus because they didn't get to pitch their senior seasons? Um, there's definitely some um, catching up to do, I guess you could say, just because you know, most of those guys got to pitch their full junior year and then – Pitched that summer and then their senior year, you know, I was, we were talking about their day. I think they made three, maybe four starts their senior year. Um, and then really the fall, there wasn't, there was guys in and out, you know, there wasn't probably, usually in the fall, those guys will get 25, 20, 25, 30 innings. I think this fall, there was about 10 or 12 for some of them, you know, probably on a high end just with the COVID testing and the contact tracing and all that stuff. So, yeah, because if you um, were in contact, yeah, it's 14 days you at were, that point. So bye bye. for two weeks. So um, there was guys in and out. And, uh, you know, that was obviously, and that's not just the younger guys. I think everybody in general just, it's tough. Um, you know, because even our guys that were older, I mean, you know, you look at Micah Dallas, like, yeah, that was tough. You know, it was in and out. And uh, guys couldn't really get in a routine of lift, throw, bullpen, play, you know take some of your lumps in the fall and, and get some things figured out and kind of understand um, where you're at as far as on the mound or at the plate or wherever it may be. And so, you know, it's been a unique year for sure um, with some of that stuff. So, um, you know, it's part of it. Everybody's having to deal with it. And, you know, you just got to – right now there's they've been on the mound plenty and, and got to get better as they go. Yeah, have to, have to because the time is coming. To, I mean, time is flying by. I think when – when the world shut down and we had that first month, month and a half of you can't leave your house, everything felt like – a day felt like seven. And then so it felt like you were indoors for like three months. Mm -hmm. And then once we got let back out, it has just been an avalanche of time flying by as we're sitting here today on April 26th. Uh, so April's almost done. How about the lack of midweeks? Is that really – Yeah, that's not ideal. Um, by any means, like that's something that we've always um, used those midweeks to get guys innings, get guys work, get, you know, mess with the lineup, whatever you want to call it, um, develop a four starter, fifth starter. Um, you know, that stuff's been, um, it's been missed, you know, and you can enter squad and practice, but, you know, it's just something different when you put on a jersey and play somebody else. So um, we got some midweeks coming up, which is good. Um, you got New Mexico and then you got Oklahoma and got Illinois Chicago for four but I still don't think we've played the we're going to play the full 56 games you know we've missed out on some of those so um you know that's that's something that um you miss for sure not getting to play some of those games and and get guys um some work when they need to get work and against somebody else and a different opponent and, and kind of that's all different so yeah, let's just fast forward say you're in a regional it's getting late in the regional do you see guys like Gerton Sanders divine being able to be trusted and, and, and run out there? Yeah, we're going to trust our guys. I mean, you know, Gerton's had some really, really good outings and some not so good ones, you know. Um, but the stuff's been really good. And um, yesterday, I think, you know, we've talked about it. I mean, he had two of the guys he walked, he had 0-2, and it's just learning how to finish guys without trying to get them to chase and um, chase, un, you know, non-competitive pitches. And divine was – you know, a lot better on Friday and, was, yeah. and uh, needs to get going. And um, Sanders has been good and the strikes have been really good. And yesterday was the first time, hey, you know, it wasn't, uh, you know, strikes. And so, um, you know, you're always going to go through growing pains and guys got to, you know, probably consistency is probably the most important thing. But, uh, you know, you're going to have to trust those guys. You're not going to just uh, run the same guys out there and abuse them and, and get those guys um, dinged up if, uh, you know, you could – yeah, sub was on the board yesterday, but uh, when you're down four to one, we're trying to get it to sub, and so those guys need to pitch good, and that's pretty much that simple, really. Yeah, talking to Matt Gardner, pitching coach, and so this is something I've been uh, curious about. 
when I, I'd say early, mid 2000s, late 2000s, when I'd be around these pitchers, they'd always be running. I mean, at the end of the year, I remember one guy said he ran like uh, a five minute and change mile. I mean, he was just like this guy that just ran and ran and ran. Um, do, do pitchers still run like that or is conditioning changed for them? Um, it can be different for you each have, you guy. You probably had to run like crazy, right? Yeah, not crazy, crazy, okay. um, but we all Frank, ran. Frank just said you don't have to run two miles uh, today. You I mean, we ran. Long. I mean, we ran. I mean, everybody runs. Like, uh, you know, Tori does a bunch of that stuff with those guys, and, you know, he makes them run a certain amount. And, you know, they'll do a little distance but do some sprint work and do some agility stuff, and, and they'll run. Um, but it's not like they're not trying to get ready for a track team or anything like that. Well, that's good because uh, when's the last time you ran a mile? It's been a while. Ride a bike for a mile, but I won't. <laughs> Over the summer, I tried to run a mile. We had this stupid competition going. And by about the third turn on the first lap, I was toast. Yeah, I always got where, you know, I got done playing. Like, you know, I'd go out and like, okay, I'm going to go for a run. Need to stay in shape, whatever, you, you know. I get running. You get about a mile into it, and I'd sit there and go, man, I'm not pitching this week. Like, <laughs> why am I running? Like, I've done this <laughs> so much and so many times, like, Hey, I don't have to throw this week. I don't. I'm not starting a game, so just what am I doing? So um, just because you did it so much for You're so many, so long, so long, and then once you once you hang it up, it's like I want to do something else. And then you know you need to get back into it, but it's sometimes it can be tough. When I when I when I stopped playing baseball, I I kind of stopped going to class for a while. I mean, I just kind of went crazy because there's always that structure. And then always those goals. And they weren't just your goals. They were your team's goals. So mm -hmm. Everybody else depending on you. Oh, yeah. And so you're going to make your grades. You're going to be there on time. All those things, at least you hope you would take that kind of responsibility and take it seriously. And I did. But then once that, once those responsibilities and that chain of everything was broken, it was on. Oh, yeah, it was on. And you could always say, when I got done playing, you could always say, hey, I'll just go golf and walk 18. That'll be my That's workout. the exercise. There's the exercise right there. And now I don't think I could walk 18. All right, so I got to get on it. All right, we're talking with Matt Gardner. We got more coming up, one more with Coach, and we'll uh, get him gone here as he is filled in for head coach Tim Tadlock very admirably. This is Red Raider Baseball with head coach Tim Tadlock on the Texas Tech Sports Network from Learfield IMG College. Texas Tech, innovation is at our core. Grit and determination drive our ambition. Art and culture spur our creativity. We're a community that makes Texas and the world a better place. We're a university where our accomplishments are many, our achievements are global, and our victories are glorious. Texas Tech University, from here, it's possible. We're back here on Red Raider Baseball with head coach Tim Tadlock. Coach with a scheduling conflict. Could uh, step in today. And, uh, again, trust me, he's not dodging a thing. <laughs> he will be back coaching the Red Raiders on Wednesday. Uh, okay. I, I have to ask you because somebody came in. I think it was uh, Blake Silverthorne. He came in and said, uh, is coach interviewing me today? Okay. I don't know if you know this, but, you know, it went viral over the weekend, you know. <laughs> what would you uh, – what did you think of the catch? Were you proud? I thought, I thought it was good, man. I thought it was really good. You really had strong hands, held it there for a second. Um, yeah. You know, I thought it was good. My favorite part was just, you know, you played off how bad your hand hurt, which you had to. Yeah. And hopefully you, there's not another ball ever hit to you ever again. That's what I've told people, too. We, we exchanged this conversation when we got off the airplane coming back from West Virginia. And now, in the, you know, I've never really looked for it. I've only had two in the booth over 16 years. Um, the one that, that went in at Missouri State, Hammonds Field, almost killed me <laughs> because it disappeared in right, the windowsill right, right, right. and then made a hole in the sheetrock. Easily could have just drilled me right in the face and just right. dropped me dead. Um, I don't want any more. No, no, no. I mean, you're, you're one for one right now. One for one. I don't need any more. It was fun. Uh, let's, let's move on from it. But I, I just, you know, you, you baseball guys, you know, you function at a different level, so I just wanted to make sure you were happy. Everybody said I framed it. Really, it was just shock. Yeah, I mean, you got it. You're firm with your your hand and, and kind of held it there for a second. I was like, 
I cannot believe this is in my hand. And he acted like it was no big deal, like you've done it a hundred times. There you go. You know, I've only done it once. Uh, New Mexico's coming up on Wednesday. We'll talk about the Texas Longhorns in a minute, but let me just run by, uh, run down some of the the Lobos uh, situations here. Again, they've been dealing with COVID cancellations quite a bit. They've only played six home games. They had to go to Seattle, mm-hmm. Washington, just to play last week. They are nine and sixteen. They uh, have a win over Kansas State. That was way back on February twenty first. Um, played UNLV, played K State uh, three more times, and won. So they've taken, they've split with K State total mm-hmm. two and two. And then they were, again they had a, a big uh, cancellation. They had to go out west. Uh, yeah, UNLV was canceled. They had to go out and play Washington. Okay, so I've given you a little bit on them. What do you got on them? Man, they're they're always going to be offensive. Um, Coach Birmingham's been there for a long time. This is his last year, and last spin. Um, you know, he's known my my dad probably since the early '80s, and um, I've known him probably since I've probably six or seven years old. Um, you know, and so he's always done a really good job with the hitters. Um, they've always hit um, offensively. They're going to be really good. Their ballpark's always offensive, and you know, on the mound they'll mix, but. Uh, you know, it's been kind of crazy for them just because the off and on of, hey, play, no play, um, stuff they've had just, um, I don't know if they can ever really get in a set rotation or how it's going to work out. And, you know, we could see all three weekend guys on Wednesday. You know, uh, who knows, just based off kind of their schedule and what's kind of gone on. But the shortstop or second baseman Chambers is a really good player that's from Seminole Junior College that. 368 average. You know, went in the 10th round out of Seminole, decided to go to school, and um, he's a really good player. Can switch hitter can can really play, and I know offensively they're going to be they're going to be good. Six and nine in the Mountain West for New Mexico, and uh, there's a there's a certain clan out there, and uh, we just call her Mama Mang. Mm-hmm. The Mangs still have somebody there. Connor Mang is still on this team, so. Uh, she kind of came after Jamie Lent one year. I remember about, that. Yeah, about four years ago, and so we are always on the lookout for Mama Mang. So um, enjoy your time. I know she'll be in the stands, but be, but be careful, Jamie. She didn't come after you. Maybe the the COVID you know thing will you know six feet. Maybe that he could use that. You know, stay away. Don't come after me. Uh, do we know who's starting for the Red Raiders? On Wednesday, on um, we're working on that as we speak. So um, it'll probably be a little bit of everybody. We won't really extend anybody like crazy long and try to have everybody for the weekend. So um, it'll probably be a bullpen day for a bunch of guys, just some of those guys that threw this weekend and um, even some guys that didn't throw and uh, probably keep it at two or one for each guy and, and try to get everybody some work. Do you say Johnny Holstaff or Johnny Allstaff? Um, I usually just say bullpen day, staff day. Staff day. Okay. You've got the Texas Longhorns coming up this weekend. Always fun to go down there and play at Dish Falk. Uh, the Longhorns went up there and had a very competitive series mm-hmm. with Oklahoma State. A doubleheader on Saturday, 1-4-3, 1-5-2. Then on getaway day yesterday, they lost 7-3 to the Cowboys. They'll play Incarnate Word tomorrow and then have the Red Raiders the 30th, May 1st, May 2nd. What do you think about Texas? What do they bring? Um, Texas really good on the mound. Uh, the guy that's going to throw Friday, Ty Madden, uh, has going probably going to go in the first round. Um, big right hander. It's going to be 95, 98 with a really good. Are in this league. Yeah, which is a good with a good breaking ball and and the two right handers that throw the next couple of days are good. And then they got some guys um, at the back end, some young guys. Tanner Witt's a guy that turned down a lot of money. That's a two way player that's really been throwing the ball good. But they're older on the mound. Uh, they got some experience and then offensively. Um, you know, you know, got some guys that we've seen a ton of Zubia and Kennedy and some of those guys, and um, they're going to play defense. And uh, Melendez, a kid out of El Paso that's from Odessa Junior College, is really swung the bat good. So um, they got some guys that can run. They play really good at home. Uh, their ballpark's hard to score in at times. Um, so they even brought the wall in a couple. Yeah, years brought ago. the wall in, and and the ball will carry a little bit more out of the ballpark, but the turf's slow, so ball on the ground is is a good thing. And so um, they'll be tough, and they're playing good, and um, they've played a lot of close games, and they've been really good in the close games. So uh, should be a fun series. Yeah, you, you, you talked about New Mexico always being offensive. It's kind of the opposite when I think about Texas. I think about, I mean, it used to be, you know, pitching, pitching, pitching. 
defense, defense, then small ball, and and, and they they've hit the ball before. Don't get me wrong. Um, they're thirty three and nine for a reason. But it, how about it's like offensive wise? Is this better? Same? Average? Or is it hard to tell right now? Um, you know they'll have some swing and miss, but they've hit the ball the ballpark a little bit. They got about three guys that can run. I think they're offensively they've they've been pretty good here lately. You know they I think they got off to a rough start and over the last. Two months have been very good. So, um, you know, they're definitely going to – they got good players over there, and those guys will be good, and um, they'll be tough to get out. So, um, we'll have to bring our A game. Final question. Over, under on the next time you get to tee it up on the golf course. When's the, What's the date? I would say, I would say August ta- 1st. I would, I would say Tad needs to have a coaches meeting out on the golf course first to be able to go tee it up. I'd probably say, oof, probably not this summer because we haven't gone out in uh, two years. So, as soon as we get to go out in the summer, we will not be here. So, um, I mean, it's going to be probably next fall, maybe maybe next fall on a Monday or a Monday off day. Oh, man. Who knows? Uh, I hope we can see each other maybe cross paths out there. It's happened before once where uh, we let you guys play through because they're just too good. Coach, appreciate the time. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> All right, that's Matt Gardner. We're going to wrap it up when we come back. Coach Gardner did a terrific job standing in for Tim Tadlock. More coming up on the Texas Tech Sports Network from Learfield IMG College. At Texas Tech, innovation is at our core. Grit and determination drive our ambition. Art and culture spur our creativity. We're a community that makes Texas and the world a better place. We're a university where our accomplishments are many, our achievements are global, and our victories are glorious. Texas Tech University, from here, it's possible. We're back on Red Raider Baseball with head coach Tim Tadlock. We are wrapping things up. Now, J. Bob Thomas, assistant coach, third base coach, was supposed to be joining us here. He got here a little bit late. We didn't get him in. Uh, part of it was our fault as well. It's not on J. Bob, but J. Bob did have this message. Let's turn Austin into a home game. He wants to hear Raider power chants at Dish Falk Field coming up this Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And that's happened before. The Red Raiders have turned that in to a home field advantage several times. Let's make it happen again. That was his big message for Red Raider Nation. So if you can get down to Austin, let's turn it red and black as the Red Raiders try to get back going in the right direction in conference play. Still ranked 11th in the country, though, and still on a good trajectory at 8-7 and seven in conference play. Currently good enough for third place in one of the best leagues in the country. But a huge series coming up with Texas Friday, Saturday, and Sunday in Austin. We also want you to get your tickets and come join us at 6.30 for New Mexico as the Lobos come in out of the Mountain West. The Red Raiders and the Lobos will get things started at 6.30 at the law. So go to texastech.com to purchase your tickets or just show up. I'm sure we'll find room for you for more Red Raider uh, Raider power chance there in the building. Big thanks to Matt Gardner, who stood in for Tim Tadlock. Thanks, Coach Tadlock, for uh, everything that you do, and we'll be ready to go on Wednesday. J. Bob Thomas, thanks to you as well, man. We'll be talking to you soon. Jeff Haxton signing off. For Michael Tackett, our producer-engineer, God bless, guns up, and good night from the LBK.